guys, welcome back to some more AFK Journey. Today's video, we're gonna be looking at the top five heroes that we are finding really to build within AFK Journey. Now, of course, this is gonna be very dependent on the summons that you do get in here, but overall, looking at our heroes, coming in at number one is Thorin. Now, of course, he is a Greyborn, he is a tank, and the way that he works is kind of crazy. Wanna run through the skills and abilities as we go through these top five, and this is one, unfortunately, I have not been able to see. But if you're familiar with AFK Arena, so the ultimate ability here is actually the retaliation ability, soul retaliation, which of course, very similar to we see him in the other game. So he will actually amp up with soul retaliation. As he takes damage, he will also gain 20% life drain, but the retaliation will, the more damage he takes, the more damage he is going to retaliate, which makes him very, very important in a ton of different formations especially if you're pushing content where it's getting very difficult, he can take a lot of damage with this ultimate ability up. Now, Soul Plunder is another one. He targets the enemy with the highest HP, drains 18% of the current HP, which is good, and it also makes them receive more damage. So we have a damage amplifica amplification that is built into a tank, which is very cool to see. And you can see level four increases the damage received by 17% which is kind of crazy to see that he is a buffer. Now, Resurrection, of course, as a tank within this game, if he dies, he comes back up alive, which is awesome. You can also have him re resurrected with a big energy buff, as we see right there. Then, of course, the hero focus. So this is pretty interesting. Thorin's normal attack and skill increases energy recovery, which, of course, is going to go to that retaliation ability. Energy recovery is increased by quite a bit, extra 10% when re resurrection is not triggered. So if he has the hero focus before he dies, he is going to get more energy, making him just an energy monster. Then of course he has a soul pack. This is pretty cool. So before the battle, he signs a pack with the ally behind him, agreeing to take 50% of the allied unit's damage until the end of battle. When Thorin is defeated, the ally sacrifices HP to heal Thorin. So again, if you don't want to kill your tank, this is a way to keep this tank alive, guys. And then, of course, you can see the healing received will actually go down. And then we have the Enchanted Force, which is the, the um, and I, it's not the ultimate ability. It's the, oh, I forget exactly what they call it, Supreme? Maybe it's Supreme Plus ability. Thorin's ultimate drains 20% of the current HP of all enemies affected by Soul Plunder. So again, this is going to be on a much bigger scale, making him the number one hero to really get within the priority. So coming in at number two within this list is Smokey and Mirky. Now overall, this has been the absolute support hero that has been carrying me. And we can see Greyborns very strong in here. We can also see Maulers very strong in here. Now, of course, with this hero specifically where I do have him built out, he creates an aroma around him. Now, the big thing you have to remember with this hero is if he is interrupted, this actually goes away until he does the ultimate ability again. So you have to be very careful with this hero and be very careful in regards to where you're placing the hero because of the aroma that they do around there. And it just heals over time. And that is huge. You can see the expansion goes to one tile right there. Then, of course, it grants haste. And then look at the HP recovery all the way up to level five, 31% HP recovery. And there's a haste boost in there, which is kind of crazy to think about this hero. In addition, he gives the energizing formula, which of course increases the attack of ally within the aura aroma. So if they're with you, they're gonna get a haste buff and they are gonna get an attack buff, which is pretty good. And you can see even down here increases the, ally, the attack of allies by 20%. So if you're keeping him a little bit more back line and he's buffing up that back line with some of your range damage dealers, this is going to be a big amplification. Quick recovery, this of course is just gonna be a healing fact. And then hero focus, this increases their attack by 6% during the battle. If three or more non-summoned allies other than Smokey are within the aura, the attack gets boosted, which again, when you're stacking those heroes in the back makes a big difference. His mythic, it gets upgrade, gains the third upgraded effect extending it by one additional tile, getting him to Mystic Plus. You can have a massive range with this aroma that actually goes on there. And you can see making the enemies in the skill lose 12% of their HP. Now he's doing a little bit more damage. And then of course going to 14 and then 15%. The enemy is stunned while losing HP. When you think of the PVP aspect and the stunning aspect of this, it is really big. Even looking at the PVE open world content, 
being able to stun the enemy is going to be pretty big on there when you're building this out. And that is it, the Supreme Plus. I remember what it was. So the healing amount has increased 30% when they use the special uh, aroma, which of course is this one. So it's going to go up another 30% when you build them out. Kind of crazy, making this hero an absolute priority to build. Next one we look at is of course Odie. Now this is a hero that unfortunately I underestimated for a while, but as you can see, we've kind of made up for it. We've been getting a lot of copies using all of our dream shards to go ahead and get them out of the store. Now overall, this hero does a ton of single target damage, which of course makes him an absolute priority, an absolute monster when it comes to bosses. Uh, the ultimate ability right here fires a corrosive dart. The dart poison, or dart poison to an enemy, Poison target will receive 30% damage every second until defeated. So again, damage amplification right here, gains 600 energy when a poison enemy is defeated, and then of course, amplifying the damage that he's doing. But in addition, triple tap. Now he does 60% to an enemy three times. The attacks from the skill are considered normal attacks. If there's anything to buff normal attacks, he is gonna do more damage, but this is a really big one. Then of course, Venom Surge. You launch a normal attack to the nearest poison target in priority. If the normal attack hits a poisoned enemy, the damage is going to be permanently increased by 25%, stacking up to 20 times. That is right, guys, right there, stacking up to 20 times with the Venom Surge. Kind of crazy, expands the range of normal attacks to seven tiles. Now he can stay way back when you're building him up. And then, of course, the damage goes up through the roof. Increases the attack speed by 21, 27, then 33 during battle. He has the ability to not only do triple attacks, and he attacks pretty fast, but now he's buffing his own attack speed. You put him in there with Smokey and Mirky, which of course is going to buff up everything else that we have within there. Then the Heart Crusher immediately defeats Poison Enemy when their HP falls below a certain limit, which is equal to 5.2 times the base damage by the damage dart. And then of course it just increases up there owns 600 initial energy, that is right. At a plus 10 exclusive equipment, it is going to give him 600 energy off the bat, which again is kind of crazy when you think of this ultimate ability. And the Supreme One, when triple tap poisons a target, hits a poison target, damage is increased 1.5 times. So most players have said that with OD in general, when you get this signature item unlocked, the exclusive equipment unlocked, that is the game changer with the damage that he puts out because this is giving him the amplification factor of actually building him out. Definitely a reason why he comes into number three. So going back to our heroes right here, because of course, these are the ones we do not have, but overall, Rainier is one that, again, every player said, this is the priority when it comes to building out your Celestials and Hypos, that Rainier is the first one that you wanna build out. Now, mutual reflection, if non-summoned allied outnumber non or non-summoned allies outnumber non-summoned enemies, selects an enemy, deals a lot of damage, and teleports them to another dimension. That is right, guys. He is teleporting them for 10 seconds out of that. Otherwise, only target will be teleported to another dimension while Rainier remains on the battlefield. If the target is under steadfast or unaffected, which again you can kind of click here and see exactly what those abilities are or if the target is only non-summoned enemy alive, Rainier will deal 450% damage instead of going in the other realm. So a lot of players have said when it comes to the boss, you can do a considerable amount of damage with Rainier, and there were a couple where he was the best in slot for a couple different battles in there. Then of course it goes to 270 to 500 based on that ultimate ability. Now Dynamic Blast, when it starts, he switches an adjacent ally's position with an enemy if they are in symmetrical positions. So again, positioning with him does make a difference. Whenever the enemy takes damage, the ally restores HP equal to 45% of the damage until the end of battle. Total HP mount mean will be no more than 1,000 in a consecutive eight seconds. Then of course the HP goes up to 50 right there. Again, kind of crazy. But then we look at some of these damage dealing abilities. So Rainier launches a mighty strike against the healthiest enemy through the portal interrupting them and dealing damage eight times to them. 45% damage eight times. Afterwards, he punches and knocks them in the air, dealing damage if the HP ratio is above 61.8. Each hit attaches extra damage. That is right, guys. He has the ability, again, to kind of buff himself. And then you can see each strike is increased to 1.2 of the current HP. So as the enemies get stronger, he is going to get stronger with the enemies. 
and then he shares satisfaction with Ally. Each HP ratio drops for the first time, granting allies 120% HP and an energy buff right there. Again, pretty big. So Hero Focus, which of course is the buffing piece. Um, Rainier's Dynamic Balance increases the target attack by 7% when cast on an ally or reduces the target's attack by 7% when on an enemy going all the way up to a 12% attack boost. The Tuned Art Ability. 200% of the damage to the enemy knocks them down while casting Dynamic Balance. Increases their damage taken by 25%. That is right, a massive damage buff right there. And then reduces the position switch to ally da damage taken by 25% till the end of battle. And then of course the Supreme Plus ability, Rainier increases the allies attack by 4% till the end of battle if they are in symmetrical positions with the enemy hero. So again, positioning for this hero is really big. And the final one that we look at is actually right here guys, Danelle and again, Players have said that Rainier is the primary one, but this is really the backup. If you're looking to get another hero outside of Rainier, this is the one that you wanna build, and he is just a monster when it comes to PvP. And you can see here it is a Marksman. Marksman physical damage. So looking at this, soars into the air and cannot be targeted. Kind of reminds me of Athalia, again, kind of in general. During which he attacks the area with the most enemies using his spear dealing damage to everyone in the area. So it's kind of a failure with an AOE ability. Last spear hit thrust knocked them in the air. Damage dealt is increased. Gains a nectar feast buff within the, the effect duration. Using the skill won't shorten its duration until the end if Danelle has been buffed. Then of course the attack goes up right there. The damage that is going up. The skill duration is extended by two seconds if he achieves an assist or a kill. So again, PvP an absolute monster. Starry Void, normal attacks turn into penetrating attacks or penetration attacks, dealing 145% damage to all enemies. If you fought anyone in the campaign that actually uses the laser through all of your heroes, it can be absolutely decimating to your team. Our Flash is to be a better attack position if not in a good spot, triggered once every six seconds. So he's gonna move around the battlefield as well. And then of course, this is what he gives himself right here with level two, is the Nectar Feast. So gains a state of intoxication, returning, receiving non-permanent stat boost from an ally, 15% attack, 15% speed, stacking three times. And then of course you can see as the level goes up, he drinks the nectar, increasing 20% attack and attack speed. So again, a really big buff there. And then as you're leveling this up, it goes to 25% attack. He is buffing himself 25% attack. Then the normal attacks permanently increase the attack speed and the maximum attack speed up to 30 and it goes to 50 right there. So he has the ability to buff himself and also buff how fast he is going to attack. If he kills enemies right here, it is going to make a big difference with the skill being in um, the duration of the skill going up. And then of course his celestial spear summons a spear after a short delay during 200% true damage to all enemies up to three casts per battle. Skill is only available when owning the intoxication is fully stacked, which of course was the one right back here when he drinks the Dewey Nectar and he gets that. So deals extra damage, vitality by 60 for the next eight seconds. Then of course, skill goes up again. Supreme increases execution by 20 within the duration of Nectar's Feast if it has been activated. So this again is going to buff up the execution ability which is kind of crazy to kill out all of those heroes. So all right guys, so that is gonna do it for the top five heroes that you need to prioritize. And again, looking at um, the Celestials and Hypogens, let me know exactly one which one you're building out because I am going for Rainier. I've done all of my summons in here looking for Rainier. But again, that's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.